guys, it's Jessica Hayes. So I am back today with one of my obsessions videos. So this is just a bunch of stuff that I have been using and loving. I usually do this once a season. So these are going to be more so my fall and winter favorites. Uh, I'll have books, fashion, beauty, obviously, and some music, some tattoos, all of the fun stuff. So keep watching. So first up, my favorite, my new favorite, this Milk Makeup Flex Concealer. I've been using the colors Cream for highlighting under the eyes and Fair for any blemishes that I get on the face, although sometimes I just use Fair when I don't really want a super highlighted look under the eyes I used Fair today. To me, I find it really hard to find a concealer that I'm 100% happy with, and I would say that this is going to be the one that actually nails it. I love the Tarte Shape Tape, but sometimes it can be a little drying or just a little too much coverage. So if you do need a ton of coverage under the eyes, and don't get me wrong, I definitely need coverage under the eyes, but if you're really dark under the eyes, then maybe stick with the shape tape. But I just like how this flex concealer, it, it does exactly what it says. It is a flexible concealer, meaning that it is a little more emollient. So I feel like it just looks nicer and it doesn't settle into fine lines underneath my eyes. It comes with a little doe foot applicator and I usually just do two stripes underneath my eye, one on top and then just pat it in. Uh, the only thing with this is that if you're used to the shape tape, you know it's such a huge, huge container. Uh, so I think that I'm probably gonna go through this pretty quick, but I've been using it for about two months now and I'd say I'll probably need a new one in a month or so. While we're on the Milk Makeup train, I also have been loving this Milk Makeup Blur and Set Powder. I don't really wear powder a lot, uh, but I saw Geordie from It's Likely Makeup using this on her YouTube and you could instantly see just how much it just blurs your pores out. So after that, I had to try it out for myself and personally, I love this product. It's definitely something that I'm going to get also for my freelance makeup kit as well. It's just really nice and light without being too cakey, but it just really smooths out the skin. I just like how you can put it on and you don't look super powdery. It has more of a a satin finish, like a skin finish rather than being totally, totally matte. A lip that I have been absolutely loving lately, this is Ofra Bell Harbor. This is one of their long lasting liquid lipsticks. If you've been following me a while on this channel, you know that Ofra is one of my go-to liquid lipstick brands. It, it just doesn't feel super drying. They last a really long time on and you can reapply them without them getting crazy gross. And I just really like this shade. It's a good winter shade without being too dark, too light. I don't know, just like it. It's like a terracotta-ish rose. Another lipstick that I have been trying out for a few months now is the Pixie Matte Last Liquid Lips Evening Rose. These stay on so well. The only thing with this is that the shade range in them is very safe. There are lots of really, really pretty colors. There's a really dark red that I like, and then there's also just a, a mid kind of classic red and also an orange red. I love the orange red. It is beautiful. Uh, so the reds stay on really well if you're looking for a really good performing red, but basically just this formula in general is really, really, really well performing for a liquid lipstick. The reason why I like the two of these as well, the Ofra formula and the Pixi formula, is because it's not drying and it doesn't make your lips look like a butthole after you've been wearing them for a few hours. Something in the skincare realm that I have added to my routine for quite a while now is this Dermalogica Daily Micro Exfoliant. So I love the Lush Dark Angel Scrub, but I think it's a little too abrasive to use all the time. So I use this Daily, ugh, daily Micro Exfoliant, Microfoliant. Uh, about every second day. It comes out in a really fine, just soft, tiny little particles like this, and you just add a little bit of water and scrub it onto your face. The reason why I like this one for the in-between days when I'm not using my Dark Angels is because 
the particles in it are really really fine and once you pop them onto the face it just turns into like a foaming exfoliating cleanser especially love this for the days after you have been wearing a ton of makeup and you just feel like you just need your face to be really really squeaky clean as well another product that I've been loving too hard obviously because all of the labeling has come off this is the lime crime brow gel this is the color smoky and the thing that I love about this is this tiny tiny brush so most of the time because I have this now I haven't even been bothering to fill my eyebrows in I'll just use the brush like I have a little gap there that usually needs filled in and I just kind of pop it more onto the skin and just wiggle it a little bit to get any little bits that have gaps or whatever. The reason why I love this so much is because I don't, hopefully you can see that, but it's such a cool, almost charcoal-y, dark brunette color. It is very smoky. That's one of my biggest problems with brow gels is that because my hair and brows are already dark and my eyebrows are microbladed as well, if I use one that's too dark, it just, looks a little too intense on the face but then if I use one that's too brown then it's just it doesn't go with that cool undertone that my hair is so smoky has been perfect for me I finally finally found my holy grail daytime foundation and this is the Charlotte Tilbury light wonder foundation this is the shade 2 I picked this up when I was traveling in Leeds so I actually paid a little more for it than on a US site, but in my opinion, it's 100% worth it. I have it on right now with a little bit of the milk powder. You can wear it super sheer. You can build it up to be a little bit more of a medium coverage. But in my opinion, it is that perfect in between, not too thick, not too heavy, not too matte, not too shiny pretty dewy skin like foundation i don't know why it took me so long to try it but in my opinion this is the closest thing that i've found a dupe to how it looks on the skin not necessarily how it feels in the container but to mac face and body foundation the only thing that i haven't found an exact dupe for for a long time since switching my makeup over to cruelty free and now I have finally found my perfect day foundation and it's this. Just a little side note, the Charlotte Tilbury website actually does have a vegan search toggle on the site which makes it so much easier for shopping. I really appreciate brands that even though they're not a fully vegan line, they take the time to categorize what products you can use so it makes it's so much easier. I was just saying that I picked up the Light Wonder foundation while we were in England last. My husband and I visited Leeds. Uh, his favorite tattoo artist, Simon Earle, is over there. So I surprised him with some birthday tattoos. But while we were there, I was lucky enough myself to get an appointment with one of my favorite tattoo artists that I've been following for a really long time. That's Joe Ellis. And I got this little spider lady on my arm. She's so cute. Super happy with it. I also got a tattoo from Sway, which is an artist that I've followed for a really long time as well. I got like a little dragon kind of filler on my inner knee ditch, which uh, wasn't a very fun spot to get tattooed. Leeds was so fun. I got to meet one of my Instagram friends, Laura Bangs, but we hung out in person and that was really cool. There was so much, so much vegan food in England. We ate like kings. It was crazy. I wasn't expecting it to be as accommodating as it was, but what I did fall in love with over there was every single coffee shop was offering oat milk. And I'm now addicted to oat milk in my coffee. And of course, there's no one in Michigan in any coffee shops yet that are doing oat milk. So if you find it in a coffee shop that they have it, try it. Another thing that I did treat myself to this little dagger necklace from Souvenir Jewelry. I've been having my eye on this for a long time now. Just one of those cute little pieces to layer with. I have a few other necklaces that I'm going to be putting that with as soon as I can get the right kind of lengths for them, but I am super happy with this. I have a few of her rings and stuff as well, but I just thought that this was a a cute dainty little fun piece for fashion one of my favorite purchases 
that I've been wearing so much over fall and winter is this Hellvac Doom Lord hoodie. I am just in love with it. I love this really big oversized hood and then it's got a little bit of a V so sometimes if it's really cold I'll wear a scarf and then it has the little kangaroo pouch at the front as well. Pretty long sleeves too so you can pull them down nice and far but I have been wearing this hoodie so so much. It's great under leather jackets because it's a really fine fleece. So yeah this is one of my favorite pieces that I've bought in a long time. I had had my eye on it for so very long. Uh, it is a little more of an expensive piece but I'm definitely getting my wear out of it. Helvac is a great small owned slow indie fashion business. They have lots of nice like hoodie wintery pieces. So. so books that I've been loving lately, I just started Shantaram. I'm about halfway through it and I really really like it. The book is like this fat though so it's probably going to be a while before I finish it but I already know that I would 100% recommend that for you guys to read. It's just super interesting. It's about this I don't want to give too much away but it's this one guy's journey through living in Bombay, India and it's just it's got lots of different areas to the story. Lots of story building throughout it so I'm really excited to finish that. Another one that I just finished too that I loved was The Gargoyle and it was recommended to me from a previous YouTube Obsessions video. That one was really good. It did take me a while to finish it. I think I started it in the summer and I just finished it a few weeks ago but it was definitely really good as well. So during the fall season I really don't have a lot of time to do much reading because we are super busy with Halloween-y things and all of that fun stuff. Now that it's winter again I'm getting back into the reading situation so if you guys have any recommendations as always below. I love your recommendations too by the way they're always on point. It seems like forever ago that we went to this show but we did go to Chicago to see the Black Queen which were really good but they were blown away by the band that performed before them and that was Actors. They were so freaking awesome. The Black Queen had a really tough act to follow after them so Actors check them out. I believe they are touring now. Don't hold me on that but if they are playing near you I would highly recommend going to see them because they were absolutely brilliant live. Another thing that I haven't have yet to show you guys on the YouTube is this Sans Beast bag. Uh, this was the bag that I took with me traveling to England and it was absolutely a perfect size for a travel bag. It's quite roomy on the inside and I love that the inside is light so you can actually find stuff. I did love this little front pocket right here with all of the sections in it as well. So pretty much it's almost like a passport wallet at the front so you don't need to bring an extra wallet with you. Something else to lose when you're traveling too. I also love that the bag just has a really sturdy handle because backpacks aren't always easy to just throw on your back. So. I did carry it around just a lot with this handle. Sans Beast is an Australian vegan leather brand. They're f a fairly new brand and I did just learn that the designer and the owner of this brand used to design for Mimco which is a brand that I loved a long time ago in Australia. So. That makes sense why their aesthetics really speak to me. So I have been on a little bit of a jewelry hoarding spree lately. This little scorpion ring is from Mercury Hour. Uh, Mercury Hour I found through my friend Stephanie Straziri. She wears and loves all of her pieces. So I did get this little baby scorpion ring from Mercury Hour and I love it. And last but not least, you all know my favorite eyewear brand is Valley Eyewear. I love this shape and I like that they're just a little bit smaller as well. So these are more of my dressy feminine outfit glasses. They're super cute and they're super dirty right now so I need to clean them. So that was my favorites from mostly from fall, a little bit of winter. I hope you guys enjoyed them and thank you for your patience with these obsessions videos. When I do these I like to make sure I compile a list of things that I truly love and have used and am really obsessed with. I also love these videos for that back and forth of you guys giving me recommendations for stuff like books and movies, 
bands, makeup maybe, fashion. I've found so many books from all of the recommendations that you guys give me in the comments of my last few obsessions. So thank you for that. Anyways, I hope everyone has an incredible holidays. I'm really excited. I have a guardian celebration roast for tomorrow. I appreciate you guys watching and I shall see you in two weeks for my newest video. Bye.